Here we go again. I'm the type of person who does not participate in YouTube drama. I've said this many times, one of them being my first episode of Just Carp Complains. However, there has been a bigger YouTube problem that is much bigger than two YouTubers committing bro moments. This problem is affecting creators' livelihoods, completely demonetizing them, and fining people who don't deserve it. This situation is very bad, and it's only about to get worse. This, my friends, is Kappa Explained. In 1998, the FTC created a new law titled the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act that was mainly aimed to keep children under the age of 13 from having data collected on them and required website operators to maintain their safety. If you think about it, YouTube is kind of a suspect to this. They're constantly collecting data on what people watch in order to bring more videos into their recommended, especially if these viewers are more younger and watch more family-friendly content. For instance, let's say a seven-year-old goes onto YouTube and wants to look for Baby Shark, an insanely popular children's song that has claimed the position of earworms for stay-at-home moms. <laughs> By watching that video, he or she is already giving YouTube data to suggest more nursery rhymes and other related videos into the accounts recommended. As you can see, they've done it billions of times. Now to be fair, they have good intentions with this practice as they wanted to, and I quote, make these services work better for you. But that's where COPPA steps in. Last year, YouTube was ordered to pay a $170 million fine for violating COPPA guidelines with actions including, but not limited to, including traffic viewing history of minors in order to facilitate targeted advertising. They were caught right in the act. So, in a way, COPPA called YouTube out on their shit, which is good, but there are some nasty side effects. For example, if you choose to upload a video to YouTube, you have the choice of marketing your video for kids or exactly the opposite. If you mark your video as no, my video is not intended for kids, you're completely fine, nothing happens. You can go about your day uploading your video. But if you mark your video as, yes, my video is made for kids, then that's where the problems start. For starters, YouTube disabled comments and the ability to save these videos to a said playlist. Now, sure, that's fine. Like, we can all abide by that. But it gets much worse than that. If you mark your video as made for kids, Personalized ads are turned off. Personalized ads are controllable boosters of views, traffic, and income. And this can see a loss of 60 to 90% of the revenue for the uploader. Like imagine trying to make wholesome content on YouTube for a living, and you can only make a certain amount of money compared to certain YouTubers who make money by filming dead bodies. You know, seems pretty unfair, right? But it still gets worse. YouTube uses machine learning to mark videos as what they are if users aren't able to do that already. But if they see that your videos are child-friendly through the use of animated characters or other things that are geared towards kids, you could be fined up to $42,000 per video. Uh, not only can we sue Google and YouTube for compliance with COPPA, but also individual channel owners and content creators. And once this order has been fully implemented, we intend to conduct a sweep of the YouTube platform to determine whether there remains child-directed content on the platform with respect to which personally identifiable information continues to be collected. Considering how the YouTube algorithm is doing nowadays, I don't see how any of us can benefit from this. Oh yeah, but if your video is accidentally marked for kids, but it's not, your video could be completely demonetized. Possibly even your entire channel. This is affecting everybody, okay? This new law is screwing over everybody's channels. And the FTC has been so vague when it comes to describing to us what exactly this said family-friendly content is. For example, YouTube states in their rules that these videos can be determined by Subject matter of the video, whether children are your intended or actual audience for the video, whether the video includes child actors or models, whether the video includes characters, celebrities, or toys that will appeal to children, including animated characters or cartoon figures, whether the language of the video is intended for children to understand, 
When the video includes activities that appeal to children, such as play, acting, simple songs, or games, or early education, whether the video includes songs, stories, or poems for children, any other information you may have to help determine your video's audience, like empirical evidence of the video's audience, or whether your content is advertised to children. This is insane, dude. Like, how are we supposed to abide by this? This is so incredibly vague that I honestly don't even know how to compute it. Play acting? What the hell does that mean? To further my point on this, I have been wanting to make a video on an experience about the newly opened Cartoon Network Hotel. I might swear a few times in the video, so I will mark the video as not for kids. But YouTube's AI will see that the video is meant for kids because there are various cartoons that are displayed throughout the entire hotel, such as Ben 10, the Powerpuff Girls, and the Amazing World of Gumball. The AI will automatically detect this and mark the video for kids and even fine me because I marked it incorrectly. You know, honestly, I'm contemplating whether or not I should make the video at this point. And to further exemplify things, I want to explain how everyone else's favorite content will be affected. Lil Nas X's music video for the remix of his song Panini featuring DaBaby will be blocked and eventually lead to him getting sued by YouTube simply because it contains a children's cartoon character named Chowder, and there is no swearing throughout the entire song. I could give more examples, but there are just so many instances of this being spread throughout YouTube, so I just don't even know what to say. We can't be too light or we'll be fined. We can't be too dark or we'll be demonetized. All we can do is just make content that fits into this gray area that can't violate COPPA guidelines. Which sucks, because I want to make vibrant and colorful content that almost everybody can enjoy. I know my language choices and my themes can't be enjoyed by everybody, but they're enjoyed by most people. But now I have to make sure that my content fits into this gray area that follows COPPA guidelines. I don't want to do it, but I really think I have to. I mean, I don't want to be fined. Like, these government assholes who don't understand the consequences of their actions are destroying livelihoods by being so vague with their descriptions and causing our channels to be deleted, destroyed, or run out of business. But you know what? I will not let it destroy me. I've actually been thinking about streaming on Twitch for a little while now, and I think that would be a really cool alternative to YouTube. As soon as I get a good rig, I do think I will be able to stream on Twitch. I don't know. I'll keep you guys posted. But for now, I need to move on from this. I didn't want this to be a Just Carb Complains video, because I just wanted to explain the facts for those of you who didn't know or understand what is going on with the FTC. And I just wanted to give a little bit of my opinion on it. Like, I'm not even monetized yet, and I still might be sued, so I am affected by this. And so is everybody else. I guess all I can say now is, FTC, you are the reason why we can't have nice things. This is YouTube, not a fucking nursery. Deal with it.